Hey, hi, hello. My name is Discat. This is Project Hardcover, where we're letting books be the escape. Hi, and welcome to my vacation book haul. And in honor of me going on vacation, here is a little vacation-y montage thing. Wasn't that just lovely? So as you all know, I went on vacation not too long ago, and I got a lot of books. 22 to be exact. And with that being said, let's just get started. The first book that I picked up on vacation at a Books A Million, which I'm sure a lot of you are like, Books A Million, that's, that's not all that impressive, but to me, uh, it is, because I don't have any Books A Millions near where I live. I think the nearest one to me is probably about half an hour away. So, yeah, Books A Millions, big deal to Discat. But anyway, that first book that I picked up was Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. This is the third and final book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, and just, oh my god, there are no words, people. There are zero zero possible words that I could come up with to do this book and this entire series justice. I am going to be doing a full review on this series. I know, what else is new? You're gonna do a full review on every series, but no, I will be doing a full review on this. I swear, I swear, just so many words, so many feels, I must, mm, I, I'll do it, I swear. My next book purchase came from, yet again, probably not an astounding venue. I got these things at Walmart, but the astounding thing was how much I paid for them. I only paid $20 for these, and what it is, is the complete Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan. I have been meaning to get my hands on these for years, years now, and when I saw them at Walmart for 15 bucks with the new illustrated edition covers, I I had to get them. I had to. This next little batch of books I also got at Books A Million. Just Books A Million. People, if you have Books A Million in your life, appreciate it, love it, honor it, just all of those things, cause just, oh my god. So the first book of this little batch is The Monstrumologist by Rick Yancey. And since I saw it sitting on a bargain table for three dollars, I also picked up the second book in the series, which is The Curse of the Wendigo. I read The Fifth Wave by Rick Nancy for Book Tubathon, and I loved it. I loved his writing style, and I just heard amazing things about these books, how gritty and gory they are, and how just awesome they are. Plus, this one won the Prince Honor, so just, yes, I needed these. The next book that I picked up, and I was so, so happy to see it there, because I've been meaning to get it again for the longest time, was Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I have really, really had this just sitting in my Amazon shopping cart for months and months now, but just other things just kept getting in the way, and then I saw it on a bargain freaking table for five dollars, and this is hardback! I was just... Books a million! Books a million! The next book I picked up was Unearthly by Cynthia Hand, which is the first book in the Unearthly trilogy. As we all know by now, just about anything that Cat from Cattytastic recommends people to read, I will pick up, and most likely will love. And for as long as I've been watching her videos, she has been bringing up this series whenever possible, trying to turn more people onto it, because she just thinks it's so good, and so not talked about enough. So when I saw it on the bargain table for three dollars in hardback, I had to just, I, I just snatched it, snatched it right up. And then the last book in this little batch here, people, this made my year. It made my year. When I say that I've been meaning to get my hands on this book for the longest time, I mean it. I meant to get this book when it first came out. But for some reason, because of financial stuff or just other books getting in the way, like so often happens, I didn't manage to get one. 
And then they started making them in paperback, and I was like, oh, well, cool, that'll be cheaper and more doable, that's great. Except the paperbacks are hideous. Everybody, everybody knows that if you're going to own this book, you need to own the hardback edition. But of course now that it's been a year, probably two, I'm not exactly sure, it's been a while that this book has been out, all of the hardback editions that you try and find online or in bookstores cost like at least $20. But then, but then, the amazingness that is Books A Million came into my life and had it just sitting on its bargain table for $6. I about lost my damn mind, people. I was literally on the floor, in the aisle, squealing with happiness while my dad was just holding a giant stack of books looking at me like trying to pretend he didn't know me. And I did not care. And now to end your anticipation of wondering what the hell book I'm talking about, it was The Diviners by Libba Bray! Like seriously, seriously, can you imagine, can you imagine my immense joy when I just saw this sitting there with a giant six dollar price sticker sitting on it i was just oh oh this thing is beautiful beautiful the cover is beautiful and and not only is the cover beautiful just just oh do you see this do you see it just 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 look at it look at it it's oh it's gorgeous it's gorgeous so yes now this beautiful tome is now mine and i intend to try and read it in october i have a couple of books i want to get through in October, but this one has like the supernatural feel, so it's kind of a Halloween-y time read. So I intend to try to get to it in October, but no promises. Take no promises from me, even if I make them. This next book I picked up in a used bookstore in the little central village shopping area of Siesta Key, which is where I was staying. This little bookstore was called Used Book Heaven, and the book that I picked up was The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons. I have heard about this series just for years now, and this series is one of Katrina from Little Book Owl's all-time favorite series. So when I saw it on the shelf for like $2.50, I just had to pick it up. I don't know much about it. I do know it's historical fiction, I do know that it's romance, and I know that there are a lot of feels. So yeah, uh, a little intimidated by this one, but still very, very excited. And this next batch was also a books a million batch, but this batch was more of me, you know, being, this is the last day of vacation, I still have money left over, I'm just gonna go on a buying binge. So the first book that I picked up on this little buying binge I went on was Legend by Marie Lu, which is the first book in the Legend trilogy. And also, since they had it also in paperback, because for some reason I just really want to own this series in paperback, I also picked up Prodigy, which is the second book in the trilogy. Booktube has been talking about these books just incessantly since they came out. Talked about how amazing they were, how great the plot is, and how action-filled it is, how much they love the characters. So, yep, I bought them. The next book I picked up was Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss. Again, this is another series that I really wanted the paperbacks for because I've seen the hardback edition of this book and just... Uh, it It's not this. So I saw it in paperback, I've been hearing nothing but spectacular things about this series, and unlike all of my other series that I've started this year, this one isn't too, too far ahead. This book, the second book, and then a prequel book are the only ones that are out. And this is supposed to be, I believe, a six book series. So I'm not that far behind. So I really wanted to hurry up and catch up to the rest of the world. The next book I picked up is, again, another cat from Tastic Recommended Read. And it is Reboot by Amy Tintera. Again, just Kat could recommend that I read the phone book and I would probably do it. But I've also been trying to get more into sci-fi considering how I read two sci-fi books this year and I absolutely loved them and they were also recommended by Kat. So I figured I would also give this one a shot. And the last purchases that I made at the oh so wonderful and amazing establishment that is Books A Million are Blood Red Road by Moira Young. And since they had it on a bargain shelf for $3, I picked up the sequel, Rebel Heart. 
These are the first two books in the Dustland series, which, can you guess? I've been meaning to get my hands on for the longest time. Like, no, seriously. Me and Yash That Black Eye have a reading list of a whole bunch of books that I came up with like a year ago, and these were some of the first books I put on that reading list. But of course, you guys know how it goes. New, exciting books come out, and you just can't help yourself but go out and purchase them, and then other books kind of fall to the wayside, and it's just so sad and unfair. But alas, it's what happens. But I saw the second book on the shelf for like three dollars, and I'm like, I, I can't pass that up. So I just figured, go buy the first one. Finally do it, go buy the first one. And I did, and I'm happy. And then these last books are books that I purchased at yet another oh-so-glorious establishment that I do not have anywhere near where I live. I picked these up at a Goodwill bookstore. Not just a Goodwill that happens to have books, because that's like all Goodwills. No, this was specifically a Goodwill bookstore. And it was glorious! Like seriously, I don't think I saw a single book in there that was over $4. They had, like, the entire Harry Potter series in hardback, and each of the books was, like, $2 each. I was just... Psh. So the first book that I picked up in this oh-so-glorious establishment was Pretties by Scott Westerfeld, which is the second book in the Uglies trilogy. This is funny, because I picked up my copy of Uglies also at a Goodwill. I really, really wanted to pick this one up because this is you know, like, the original editions, they're the slightly smaller ones, and they have the not really glossy covers, which is what my uglies copy is, and all of the new ones, the new ones are very pretty, they just don't match. So, I was glad that I found this, and I picked it up, and this was only 99 cents. The next book that I picked up was The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. I had a friend in high school who read, like, all of these books when they came out, and she got The Warrior Heir, which is in her second series, um, and she loved all of these books, and she recommended them to me, but like sci-fi, I'm not a huge fan of high fantasy. I, uh, I don't have the commitment that it requires, but I saw this sitting on the shelf, it's in hardback, and it was only $2.00 and I've heard just wonderful things about Cinda Williams Chima's writing, so I just, I had to, I had to. My next book is actually an adult book, and it is Born of Night by Sherilyn Kenyon, which is the first book in the League series. As you guys probably know by now, I love Sherilyn Kenyon, and I love the League series. It's one of my all-time favorite series. But I actually don't own any of the physical copies of these books, except for the fifth one. I initially got into this series because a friend of mine in high school lent me the first one, and then I bought all of the other ones on my Nook. But again, it is one of my all-time favorite series, so I've really been meaning to get my hands on physical copies for the longest time. So when I saw this in the store for 99 cents, I just had to get it. And then finally, we have the last book, and this last book was just a complete and total impulse buy. I kept passing it and passing it on the shelf, and every single time it just drew my eye and just kept saying, buy me, buy me, even though I knew absolutely nothing about it. So finally, I just said, gosh darn it, fine, book I will purchase you, and that book is Icons by Margaret Stoll. Again, I know nothing about this book. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've seen, you know, all right reviews for it on Goodreads. I'm not even sure. Um, and the only other thing that I know is that Margaret Stoll helped co-write the Beautiful Creature series with Cami Garcia. But other than that, no, absolutely nothing about this. But again, it was calling to me, calling to me, and it was only two dollars, so I just went for it. And that's it! Those are all the books that I bought on vacation. That is 22 books in total, 8 of which are hardbacks, and I would estimate pretty closely that the entire thing cost me maybe $110. That's right, I am painfully happy with this outcome. So there you go, there are all the books. There are reviews coming your way, guys. I've finished, like, three series since I've talked to you guys last, 
So, yes, I will be doing reviews. I promise. I promise. I promise. Thanks, you guys, for watching. I will see you next time. And remember, books are the escape. <laughs>